Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel. This week, we're gonna do a review, and it's not just a gear review, we're reviewing our teardrop trailer. It's a 2020 New Camp Tag XL Boondock version. It's the biggest, widest one of the tag models they make. We bought it in February of 2020 at an RV show. We got a pretty good deal. I believe we paid right around 16,000. The list price at the time was about 22,000. We had been looking at full-size campers. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd wanted to get a camper. We'd, we're starting to look at like 20, 25, 30 footers. Um, but we're, and this is about when the teardrops started getting popular again. So we didn't go with a big camper for one thing because storage, storage fees, our driveway is sloped. We don't have a lot of room on our um, property where we could store the camper. So then we're looking at, you know, 70 to a hundred dollars a month to store an RV. And then can you get it out at certain times of year or they're locked up during the winter? It's just not quickly and easily accessible. We like to go camping. We do a lot of weekend trips if you watch our channel. Um, and we'll just roll out on a Friday afternoon and come home Sunday afternoon, or we'll do a Thursday to Sunday or a Friday to Monday. So one of the big factors for getting a teardrop was they can fit in your garage. In most regu regular garages, they'll fit. It's just quick and easy to get out and get on the road and get out camping, which is what we want to do. I don't want to spend half, you know, have to go pick up a big RV, pull it in front of the house, load load stuff up. Same thing when you get home. The teardrop we get home, we just roll it right into the garage, take out our stuff that needs to be washed, and we're done. We keep it ready to go. At a moment's notice, all we would have to do is load some groceries and a lot of the food we actually keep, like spices, uh, some canned goods, some dry goods, we just keep it in there already. Some coffee, sugar packets, trash bags. We have shower towels already in there. We keep these puffy coats in there for when it's cooler. Like it's right now it's mid-May and we're in northern Wisconsin and it's a little chill in the air. So. We had already switched from our winter loadout to our summer loadout because it's getting warmer but and we've been traveling and going south where it was warmer but up here it's still kind of cooler it was 45 this morning so we reach in our cabinet and grab our puffy coat it's just handy to keep everything loaded ready to go we can be out the door hitched up and gone in like 30 minutes if we decide to go now the reason we chose new camp we were looking at some of the custom builds uh, there's quite a few of them these days not all of them have been around forever. Uh, I know we watched uh, Primal Outdoors channel, Jason, he had a teardrop that was the one we were looking at and after a year or two, it like fell apart. It was junk, so I don't wanna spend 15 or 20,000 and the custom jobs are most of them are around 20 grand. Yes, you can get some nice features. They're a little more built for off-road, uh, but the biggest thing with those is once you put your order in, you're probably waiting a year. We didn't want to wait. We just want to get out and camp. New Camp as a brand has a good uh, history, quality. They've been around. They're Amish made in Ohio. The factory is beautiful. Uh, I've never seen, there's a lot of people that own New Camps. They have the tag, is the smallest model. There's a tab 320S, which is a little bit bigger. And then there's a tab 400. And there's a few others, I can't think of the names right now, but so they've been around um, and there's a lot of people with their brands. I've never seen a negative review really on them. You don't hear about quality issues. Now, the as, as a off-road, this is marketed as a boondock off-road and we've taken it pretty, pretty deep off-road. Like if you go on our playlist, last year we went out to the Grand Canyon. It was a 5,000 mile round trip. We drove to the North Rim, which is very remote. And then on the way back, we drove to Alstrom Point in Southern Utah. And it's 25 miles off road to get to the good camping spot, which overlooks Lake Powell. I'll link the video in the description. It was really rough, heavy washboarding, um, dirt road, gravel. There's some rocks. There was some, some bit of inclines which you had to navigate. We have our traction boards on our truck. And the camper made it out there fine. It does have the regular single axle, dexter axle. You're not going to do a lot of like Jeep type rock climbing stuff with it. There are places you're not going to take it. But for most of the time, I mean, we're in the Midwest, so we're not 
you know, we don't have a ton of BLM and, you know, really places we can go way deep out west, we, you know, where you can really get into some remote areas. But even with that being said, we can get to most places we want to go, so. The independent timber and axles would be nice that you see on the custom trailers, teardrops, but I don't feel it's necessary. You just, you might, we might, we go a little slower sometimes and just take our time. We're not in a rush. For us, the destination and journey, it's about both. We're not in a hurry to get there. The biggest thing we love about it is um, the outdoor kitchen, the clamshell kitchen. We like to camp and be outside. Camping to us is not dragging a 30 foot RV home basically to the campground. Nothing against that and I'm sure one day we're gonna move up into a bigger size. But for now, this is what we wanna do. We're mid 40s, uh, we're pretty mobile. I'm a bigger guy so it is. there are challenges with the teardrop. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's talk about some of the pauses. We've already talked about the storage and fit in the garage, how quickly you can load and go. It doesn't weigh much, so I think we're around 1,500 pounds. Now we have a full-size Toyota truck, which pulls it easily. In fact, there's many trips where we're on the highway and I'll start doing 70 or 75 and I'm like, oh, the trailer's back there. We try to keep it around 65 or 70. You don't experience sway, uh, anything. It's so smooth, you just you forget it's there. There are people that tow these with Subarus and I've seen a guy towing it with a Mini Cooper. Now I don't think I'd do that, but you can tow this with smaller. So if we want to be off grid, which we do boondock most of the time without electric. We don't go to a lot of electric spots. We like to do state parks. We'll do uh, state forests, national forests, overland trips. When we get a chance, we will. We don't do a lot of like RV camping at bigger RV parks or just crowded places. The electric spots are harder to get. So, so we do have a Renogy portable solar suitcase which we can deploy and hook up to the camper if we need power. We were at Grand Canyon last year for four or five days and the battery never went down. I mean, we just kept our solar panel on and, and it operated everything fine. You cannot operate the air conditioner or the regular 110 volt plugs with the solar panel. Everything else will run off battery. The, the TV, it has a TV, it has speakers, a stereo, it has a little uh, sink and like a seven gallon water tank. We don't even use that a lot, but you can, you can use that off battery. All the lights are powered. It's got a lot of good lights I'll show you that we like. The spare is mounted up under. There's still, there's a reasonably good amount of ground clearance. So we've been in some remote spots with it and had no problems. We, do, we just take our time a little. I did have to replace the China Bomb tires that came on it originally. They were one of our first two or three trips. We had a blowout in one of them. Camper handled fine when it happened. We got right off the road. Come to find out those tires, you should not supposed to drive them over like 60. And I didn't realize that at the time. So we went with some LT tires and some Firestone Destination. AT2s, they're really good. They're durable. They have a softer sidewall. Typically you don't want that for an RV, but this thing doesn't weigh much, so one of our favorite things about the tag versus some of the other, you know, custom job teardrops is the skylight window. So we can lay in bed and just look up at the stars or the moon or anything and in the middle of the night and that's that's one of my favorite things about it. We really don't have a lot of negative things to say about it. We've had a little issue with the shades, you have to be careful with them. Uh, we had to go back and have that fixed. The it's got the roof rack on it. It came with the it came with the Yakima uh, roof awning, which it's mounted originally the up, so we had to flip it. That's the only issue getting in the garage, so we just flipped the bracket around and it fits in the garage perfectly. One big thing about teardrops, you need to secure them with some extra locks as best you can. They can get stolen pretty easily. We try not to worry about that, but that's what insurance is for. That's another benefit of this trailer, the teardrop, is it's so easy. I. I can move it around my campsite however I want it. By yourself. By myself. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to get it situated in just the right spot. We can get to a campsite, oh this looks better, we're going to move it here, we're going to move it around, place it how we want it. The door is locked from the inside at night if you'd like that. Um, there's locks on the outside doors, clamshell kitchen locks. That's a, one negative is there's not a lot of storage space in the kitchen, but if, if you buy smaller stuff backpack type stuff, um, you can work around it. We carry a lot of kitchen stuff because she likes to cook if you watch some of our camping videos. 
So yeah, the storage is a little bit of a factor. There are people that take out the microwave and get that made into a cabinet. Uh, if you join some of the new new camp owners group on Facebook, there's a tag your it group. There's there's quite a few new camp groups, and you can see all the different modifications some of the owners do. So in the two years we've had it, we've probably done. Uh, I would I I wouldn't even know what how to guess. We started our YouTube channel a year ago. We've got like over 50 videos on there. We try to go out twice a month, sometimes more, and do a big trip every year, at least one big one. The Grand Canyon trip alone last year was 5,000 miles, and we did a bunch of other stuff. I we've probably got 20 or more thousand miles on the camper. I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say 100 nights in it, maybe. I don't even know. This year we did winter camp with it. This was our first season winter camping. If you go back and watch some of our videos, we did some extreme winter camping. I will say when it's below zero, that's another thing. If you're not plugged in, you can't use, the new ones come with a heater built in. If you're not plugged in to an electric site, you can't use it. We have a portable little heater we plug in. We did do a few electrics over the winter. But for the most part, we did not, we boondocked in the winter in the deep snow. You'll see, we went up to Minnesota. We've been slept, we slept inside this camper when it was minus 16 degrees outside and minus 36 wind chill. Now we had two or three extra blankets, a zero degree sleeping bag and fully geared up long johns and stuff like that. It did get, it gets condensation in it from your breath if you don't vent. We did not vent because it was so cold. There was frost, a frost line in it. But we warmed it up and wiped off the water and it was fine. Just if you look at the videos uh, on our winter playlist, you'll see them. We, but we've taken this thing everywhere. I know a lot of people, some people are looking for more off-road and just more custom, and that's fine. There's a lot of good custom builders out there. There's a lot of good ones, but we're happy with this. I mean, it's been two full years, a little over two full years. No issues, knock on wood, other than the flat tire. And we go, we've gone out pretty far in the forest, and we use it a lot, so we, we've already made our money's worth out of it. The bedding... The mattresses, they're about this thick. That's one thing we did. We got a foam, three inch foam to put under the mattresses. There's two separate singles. It makes like a queen size basically. That's the covers we use as a queen size. So you have, first thing first is you have this nice shelf thing on the top. We use this to store all of our spices. I use some of our measuring cups, some of our extra drink mixes. This bar here, we actually added on. I think we actually got this at Lowe's or Home Depot. Yeah, it's just pipe. It's just a pipe that we actually screwed on here and we actually put our paper towels on there. You do have the outlets in the back. So you've got two outlets and then you've got some plug-ins for the phone jacks back here. So those are there. Two nice outlets. You've got the jacks and then the plug-in back there for charging. You have the nice countertop. We actually, when we're setting up, we will put a table and set up and you can actually pull out we will put our cutting boards. A lot of times we have our hot pot things are over here. This is our, if you've watched one of our other videos, this is all of our kitchen storage container that has coffee, tea. It's a little bit of a mess, but it has coffee, tea. I'll open it up. So it's sugar packets, wet wipes, flour, Sides for making stuff, coffee, tea, taco mixes, seasonings. It's a one for all. So it's a nice place to put all those little things that you don't want to just throw into a bin. Um, I think we actually did a video on that. Um, a storage storage solution or something like that. We, these actually we added on. So we added on these little pull on tabs that we put all of our kitchen utensils. This bracket, we added this also, so this did not come. So this was a bracket we actually added on to put our knives, to hang our coffee cups, our bottle openers. We added this. Action. This actually came on here. So this is where we put all of our um, dish soap, our sponges, our lighting, sometimes extra napkins. Here is our sink. This will actually fold down or fold up. Behind here you have the water pump and it has our hatch light. Um, that will actually, this light that will turn on, that's the hatch light. Then we have the water pump that's here. 
We have a two burner stove. Um, here is under sink kitchen storage. So ours is a little bit of a mess, but we actually can store quite a bit in there. We actually put some bins inside of here. We actually just bought some bins, I think from like Walmart and we put a lot of our dry goods, extra bowls, paper plates, trash bags, our kitchen stuff, kitchen, um, top tablecloth table so that will all go underneath there. We store our fudgy pies. pies and everything. Here's the microwave that is provided that we really, like I guess I think we've maybe used it once or twice. My son has used it. We actually use the microwave to store breads and stuff sometimes <laughs> while we're traveling. The, the cabinets are nice because they lock closed. You hear the click close. So. And then like he was saying, a lot of people have actually modified this and taken this out. You can actually have it done at yeah, the new dealer. Yeah, New Camp will send the faces to match and, and have another cabinet like this one. It's just like this one. Here. On this side, this is where Jason told you we took out our fridge that came. This is just a bin from Walmart that we bought that this carries all of our, this will come out. We actually put our stove on top of here and then we have a bin that we actually put all of our pots pans silverware everything kind of goes Iron in here skillet dutch oven silverware plates and stuff it all fits in there nicely so for us it works good like you we actually will get get in here a huge regular 12 inch um cast iron skillet we have our backpack it's a hot mess i really would show you but it's a hot mess we have our backpack set up that has our plates and pots we have all of our utensils in there um we actually even hold cups in there or skewers. It holds a lot of stuff in there. Um, I would just, my personally, I would take this out. If you're not someone that uses an electric site all the time, that's going to use the microwave. Taking this out, I think the added storage would be a big benefit. And I don't think it's that costly. I'll see if Jay can find out the cost and maybe add that in there. I will say that... Oh, and you can turn on. So there is a light here. Yeah, that's another light. So you can actually turn on we, like a smaller light. So we actually use that light more than anything this big one's Which nice all, but it'll bring a lot, bring of, a lot bugs. of bugs but can't you put you can put a little film yellow film over it to try to get it into a yellow light um i will say this stuff tends to not always stay it's magnet while you're traveling sometimes it does but and then there the is, cups usually stay there is the speaker so there is a stereo yeah the system. stereo which is nice you can use it inside or out so that though yeah, there are those so let's take you to the inside so you have the storage containers, two of these, right up above each person's head. We'll actually store our bathroom bag. My husband carries like his knives is up there and some of his reading material. We added on this nice key hook. With a Velcro. With a Velcro. Um, add on the thermostat so that we have that. Do the switches. We actually, there's, I didn't show you, oh, we actually added this pull tab too. He'll actually put like a jacket or a sweater up there. That way we have that when he's going to hop out in the morning. There are two switches up here. One is for the porch light and one is for the ceiling light. So you have the porch light, which I don't know, I got to make sure you turn it off and on. Then you have the ceiling light. So the ceiling light is this light right here, which is really nice to have on. It actually, when it's nighttime, it'll light this up really nice. Up on here, this is your exhaust and your fan. So you do have the thing that actually opens up the vent. So you have to have that. You're supposed to have this vented. So I'll open that up and I'll turn on the fan. It's the, it's the basic fantastic fan. It's really powerful. So that's on full blast. There is switches to change whether the air is blowing up or blowing down on you. It will be the biggest draw of your power when you're just running off battery. You do have to always make sure that if you open this before you get on the road to go traveling, this has got to be lowered down or you will pull the top right off of there. Switches here. You do have a set of switches here. You have the accent light, which is the light that's right behind our, I'll turn it on and off for you. That is the accent. That's actually nice if you're in here just by yourself at nighttime. We have our porch and front exterior lights are on here. Do the exterior one. So these are like ditch lights. They're, these are good if you want to light up your, your front of the camper, your tow vehicle, the hitching area. 
So the biggest thing when we went to buy ours is the dealer said he wanted us to make sure, could you get inside and how'd you feel? Because a lot of people, when they see this, the biggest thing they think is how can you possibly sleep in there? Don't you feel claustrophobic? I'm going to tell you no. It is actually very comfortable. I've actually been inside or looked inside Chuck and Sherry's. They have, what do a they sun have? Ray. A sunray. A sunray. And I'll say that the bed is up higher. I would feel a little more claustrophobic in there. I, you know, I'm not even close to touching the top. I feel like there is tons of room. It's literally a bed on wheels, but it's a pretty comfortable bed on wheels. You know, you've got storage, you've got the television, you can put plenty of pillows in here. It is truly comfortable an area for you to sleep in. The only drawback, trying to get, like you have to have somewhere else really to get changed. I can semi get changed in here, but Way I'm gonna tell you, to trying it. to lay in here, just put on, a pair of pants or something when you're trying to get up before you go out the door there's not a lot of movable room to move around um so what that's why we did a video on our joka, our joka which we will actually put close to our camper and we'll use that as our kind of like our we can pop bathroom. out and use as our changing station and bathroom. and bathroom but i think this is totally comfortable i don't feel closed in i think it's it's pretty awesome yeah, the, oh, the, so, the getting dressed part in here, taking your pants off and on, you can do it. I mean, you, you can do your you tops lay on your pretty easily, and, but changing out your pants. Like, if it's, you're not real flexible, it can be difficult, I, uh, but it's manageable. You can, you can do it, but... It, the, the nice thing is, uh, another benefit is we're not having to worry about cleaning a sewer tank or any of that stuff. We have a luggable loo, five-gallon bucket with a toilet lid that's in our Joka. And um, that's just, it's easier for us, you know? We just have a bag and it has the, the gel stuff in it and you just toss it and go, I mean. Oh, I don't think you showed them. There actually is, so there actually, oh, he's probably gonna have to move the camera. There is, you could actually lift up the mattresses and there is storage underneath both sides of the bed. So there's actually a huge amount of storage area. Underneath here, we'll actually kind of have some of our our welcome sign, maybe some kind of extra hoses, blankets, that kind of stuff. But there is another whole storage area that you can use. The door, the doors has have a latch thing here, so it'll stay open if you want it. The wind. One one drawback that I wish it had was, and that's where you get some of the custom jobs, is uh, a screen door. That would be nice. But it's not a deal breaker. If it's nice out, you can just have it open if there's not too many bugs and stuff. So you do have, this will lift up. This is that extra foam that Jason talked about that we added for extra comfort. And then there's our pull up and then we'll put like our hiking sticks. We have our extra, if you're gonna use a plug-in, our surge protector, a lot of our electrical stuff and you can put blankets kind of go inside of here. And then this goes down. So up front, we we have this Lifesaver five gallon, uh, the water filtration jerry can basically. You pump it to pressurize it. But so we put a bracket here and bolted it to the frame, and then we lock it. So that's where we travel with our five gallons of water. And in addition to the, you know, if we want to use the sink on the camper itself. Over here on this side, we will strap down our five gallon toilet bucket and we put our, we have a five gallon or a five pound propane little mini guy that goes inside the bucket. Those travel here. Now there are people, if you look on the new camp uh, forums, they get another diamond storage box. They'll put one here and one on that side. You can do that as well. We have not upgraded the crank. It's just a regular hitch crank. Some people have done the other one where it folds up. There are ones that will put that jack jacket bike rack here. We haven't tried that. Having the stargazer window is amazing, like I said. And then it'll come up if you want to open with the screen to get even more air in there. So we will store our our rigid boxes right in front. We just they travel in our truck. 
they hold our propane hoses and some of our tools and um, just other stuff. And we just throw them out in front of the camper when we get to camp. This is the airplane wheel modification. It's got the two tires so it's easier to pull the camper around. Uh, we have a nice ball lock here that's very important for security. Not that if someone wants to steal a teardrop, they're going to steal it, but it's at, at, you want layers of security to kind of deter them. So maybe they'll move on to the next campsite. We have another five gallon water jug that sometimes we'll put here if we need. If we're going on a long trip and we want extra water, but typically you can find water and we can just refill our jug along the way. The nice thing about the blue jug that we have, the lifesaver, is we can go down to the lake and fill it up and it'll filter the water. It's got a good filtration, but that's a separate video. So the spare tire is right there. And there's the crank for it. It lowers it down with a chain. There's our Trimax wheel lock. That's our tires we got on it. There's our solar suitcase. And we'll just fold down and it, it locks. These are the bell vents for the air conditioner. It has a radio antenna. It has a nice diamond plate on the front of it. There's a solar input port. If you have the right adapter, you just plug the solar clip from the... You need solar panels that have a um, charge controller and that can go right into here. Or they come with alligator clips which you can clip to the battery. This is, we have our leveler blocks, the stabilizer crank, the battery comes in the case inside. It's got a full size propane. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we've been using this thing a lot for the last two years. I've never had to replace this yet. Now we don't cook everything on it. We do cook out on our Blackstone, but we've used it a lot. It's got a battery off switch here. You wanna keep this on when you're traveling so your vehicle is charging the battery. You would turn it off maybe when you're at home or whatever. We leave ours plugged in a lot at home anyway, in the garage. So the moment you've all been waiting for, would we buy it again? Yes. Yeah, absolutely we'd buy it again. And we'll probably keep ours for 10 years at least if it lasts, which I have no doubt it will. As long as I stay flexible enough to get my pants yeah, on. Yeah, as long as you stay flexible <laughs> enough to get in and out of the thing. I mean, as, I mean, I, maybe as we get older, I might, you know, you might move to something a little bit bigger, but I feel like this suits our lifestyle to be able to go out year round, which we love. So for right now, this works for us and our family. You can put it right in the garage. We have full accessibility to it at all times. It's comfortable when you sleep. We have the, the kitchen in the back, so it totally works for us. So you have to decide, does it work for you? Yep, we would absolutely buy it again. I would recommend it to anyone if you, if you wanted to do the teardrop lifestyle. Sure, there's the good custom ones, but you're gonna wait for them to build one. And I already know of a few companies that are no longer in business. Will they be around in five years if you need service or warranty work or any of that stuff? New Camp's a great company and they've been around. So, hope this review helped. It's a two year review or two and a half years just about. We put a lot of miles on ours. We've used it a lot. We're, it's not a one or two time a year deal. We're, we're using this thing two, three times a month. There's a few little things you might, I might change about it, but I would absolutely buy it again. So please like, subscribe, share, follow, join us on our camping adventures. If you go to our playlist, you can see places we've been with it and see how we set everything up at camp. 